I build the instrument, so there is no mortgage. So how can there be a default if there's no mortgage? Yeah, what they what did is they, say, sold did, did, did the, they sold the security bond as an investment contract to investors. And they never transferred yeah. the, the instruments to, to the REMIC because they never qualified the REMIC as a real estate investment trust, number one. And they never filed a statement to treat the property as foreclosure property, that's number two. And they didn't transfer the loan documents within 4975 within the first 90 days of the safe harbor provisions of 4975. So you have three prohibited transactions which carry a $50,000 fine for each violation. And you have a 100% tax liability under 4975 for the prohibited transaction and for the violation. You have a 15% penalty for the violation and 100% tax liability for the prohibited transaction. So you have 115% payment due to the IRS. That's why this whole thing is a tax liability. Well, it's come back full circle then, the tax liability. Yeah, it's ta it's, uh, what you're dealing with is a 100% uh, 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 tax liability. You're not dealing with a mortgage foreclosure case. And what the servicing company is doing is acting as a backup withholding agent for the IRS. Okay. So they, well, forfeit them. Work... they do a forfeiture to pay for the default that they engineered at closing. Okay, could we that put in the ghost winch once again a second one and that clear the books what they for our liability? What nobody understands is that the borrower was the servicing company. They borrowed capital from investors who put capital into a REMIC at closing. Well, so they, they're using your property as the collateral for the loan that they borrowed from the investors. So the investment contract is the pooling and servicing agreement that was signed by the servicing company. They can't hold you liable on a contract that's not memorialized or subscribed to by the uh, person being charged. Where does the homeowner sign a pooling and servicing agreement agreeing to make payments to the servicing, to the investors as, a, as an invest, investment contract? And where did they get the authority to, to make money off of a mortgage loan in violation of 1639B of Title 12? That's a violation. You can't make money off a mortgage loan. They're making money off of an investment contract, not a mortgage loan. That makes so much sense, Gene. You, um, you're saying that the promissory company note is actually a check. They cash, that's why they endorse it, paid to the order. So they're not treating it as a liability instrument. Um, well, read 3-104-D. 3-104-D says that if it's a liability, a promise to pay is a liability instrument, an order to pay is a draft. The right. person entitled to enforce it can treat it as either. So once they treat it, okay, let me ask you a question. I make out a check to you. Pay, pay to the order of. And I give you that check. That check is a liability instrument until you endorse it for payment. If you take my That's check, turn it over and endorse it for payment and deposit it in a demand deposit account, you've been paid. It's no longer a liability <laughs> instrument. It's an asset. <laughs> <laughs> it's that simple. It's that simple. It's that simple. They, you gave them a, a draft, they endorsed it for payment, and they got paid, and I can prove it. End of 